How's it going, everyone? Welcome back to some second Wigan Nook. Are you ready? Because I'm ready. Let's do this. Where were we at? Chapter 8. A voice in the intermission.彼が足音も立てていない。嗅覚についてはこれもおそらくは平気。私に体臭はない。汗をこの鋼の体は書かないから。大丈夫。彼を私は見つめていられる。腕に何かの感触があった。すぐには気づかなかった。痛覚を持たない私。触覚。それは視覚聴覚情報よりも遅く脳に届く。ぐいっと引っ張られて彼を見ていたはずの視界が揺れている。8時間と2分も苦労な
町民とはおそらくゲームに関する言葉発音のニュアンスに意図的な強調があったこの邸宅で開催されるゲームの証人かけれど私は違う私はゲームについて関わってはいない私のしたことは議員の入力を拒否してこの男を追ったことただそれだけそれ以外のことは何もしていないただ見ていただけ一緒にいると決めたキーアを放ったまま俺が目的を遂げるには腹の立つことだがてめえらの協力がいる目的とは本物の貴族を探すことだお前知らないかいいえ役に立たない小娘だいいか貴族どもを見かけたら俺に伝えろなぜなぜ貴族を探しているのですか殺すためだ俺は貴族たちを殺しにここへ来たのさそれが俺のゲームだこんなものは違う He smashed something into the floor. Yes, that was a brick. The brick's surface was cracked, and upon it was the Grand Prince's seal. I was the one who 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 was the one あなたは殺すの人をとはいえ貴族どもを殺すために上層兵を何百も相手にするのは面倒だろう大公爵の招待状は絶好の機会だと思ったんだがな<笑>てめえも見てないとなるとやれやれそう言って肩をすくめるその仕草はどこか義理を思わせる貴族なら無数にいたはずですホールにも各個室にもいいや一人もいない俺が事前に用意しておいた情報とここの貴族もどきの顔が一つも一致しねえのさお前は知っているのか知らない私はそんなことは一切知らない連中は本当に貴族連中なのかどいつもこいつもつかみどころのないまるで影奉仕だどいつを殺せばいいかわからん影奉仕私は首をかしげる疑問を示すためにこの男ケルカンは何を言っているのかわからない影奉仕どいつもこいつもここに集った貴族たちの顔の見分けそんなもの着くはずがない私に搭載されたセンサーは常に正確だ彼らは皆同じ顔をしているここには4種類しかいない7時間前からずっと4種類の影帽子があるだけだ男女2種類体格2種類の This is getting real weird At long last, the first day fell into night. Twelve hours had passed since the game began, and there were less than thirty six hours left until the game ended. Gid spoke to a number of people, however, he couldn't tell them apart. All the aristocrats seemed to have the same face. Talking with aristocrats took a long time. He couldn't afford to talk with the same one over and over again. Nevertheless, He had been able to gather some evidence and information through persistence. Patient, opposite consideration, conversation. Only seven pieces. The first night, at the present time, he had information on seven pieces of evidence. One was the first thing he'd found that fragment of a brick which felt like debris to him. One was a toy flower pot. A toy flower pot? Its stem and leaves were spring driven to mimic a moving plant. So, like a fake plant, I guess? One was a toy dragon, 
Its mouth and wings were moved by another spring contraption. One was a small toy monkey. It hit a percussion instrument using other spring contraption. One was a tin shelob toy. Its mouth and wings were moved by another spring contraption. Common theme is spring contraption. One was a tin doll. Its eyes and arms were moved by another spring contraption. Except for that brick fragment, I suppose. One was a ribbon warped by heat. It had been exposed to such horrible temperatures that it hardly retained any of its original shape. A ribbon warped by heat? Like, ribbon as in like a metal ribbon? Or as in like a cloth ribbon? Because if it's metal ribbon, maybe it was at one point a screw or something? I don't know. The toys with the spring screws were probably hinting at creatures where the piece of rubble and heated ribbon hinted at that tragedy. Assuming that all the evidence was true, what did it show? All he knew at the moment was that it involved the revival ten years ago. They show the revival of ten years ago. That's not a bad deduction. Whether that's true or not, I have a few pieces of evidence now. Only three of those were ones he'd actually found and acquired personally. The pieces was a brick, the flower pot toy, and the dragon toy. The rest were all things he's heard from others. That information couldn't be confirmed. Hey, um, want to throw this out there? A flower pot and a dragon? Geese killed a creature that was a plant and that dragon one that was like inside the information space, right? I mean, those are the two things he killed. As for the Shelob one and the other monkey, I don't think he's killed creatures like that yet. He's killed a golem, right? Are those the only creatures he's killed so far? Those three? I don't remember. Oh, of course that one, the original one, which I don't remember what it looks like now. The one who shapeshifted? I don't remember. Fuck. Anyhow. <clears throat> Can you pretend to be a detective any longer, Dr. Gi? Conversation alone wouldn't get him anywhere. Maybe he should have studied techniques for finding scattered evidence. How did one study that? By becoming a hacker's apprentice? It felt like all he'd gained was fatigue. Talking was never his strong suit, and he'd never spent a long time doing just that. Although, all he did was pretend to be in a good mood, chime in agreeably, and fake a smile. It would have been impossible for the old him, who hardly spoke at all. This was all thanks to Kia. Lately, he'd had some practice conversing with others. He'd make this the last one for the night. This aristocrat woman in front of him. Out of those he spoke to, the aristocrat men hardly ever listened to him. So naturally, he started talking to the women more. The wives reacted to him as if seeing something incredibly rare, like a wild animal in a zoo from ten years ago. The aristocrat women in front of me is the same. This woman calling herself the wife of Count Gravelis. Fortunate. わたくしの知るところ、私が最も well now, I don't think I can beat that. As one would expect of the wife of Count Gravalis, it's easy for the famous to obtain information. Seven for one? That's a fucked up trade. Not gonna lie. 